Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for taking the time to hear from us. It's great to see this webinar so well attended, actually. Um, as Brian says, Democracy Matters has been away for a little while, so it's fantastic to see so many people online today and engaged in what we're doing. So thank you very much for that. Um, so what is Democracy Matters uh, for those who weren't around in the first phase? Uh, it's focused on how we devolve more power and resources to communities in our towns, villages and neighbourhoods. We're asking communities around the country to imagine what more powerful community decision making arrangements could look like in practice and what we need to do to make them work for everybody in the community. This is really important work and it's really close to mine and the team's hearts and I'm sure it is yours as well, uh, given, given your roles as community councillors. And it's a shared priority for Scottish Government and COSLA, which I genuinely believe if we get this right, we can transform local democracy and in turn transform this country. The first phase of the conversation took place before the pandemic and generated a lot of interest from community councils and also the community development sector in particular. And then came the pandemic, of course, which was a difficult time for pretty much everybody. And public services were stretched to a point that I didn't think we ever imagined was possible. Despite this, communities showed, showed during this period the incredible contribution that they can make to public service provision when they're trusted and resourced to take action. This is an important lesson for, as far as I'm concerned and one that I think sets the context for moving forwards with this second phase and also ensures that we really should keep ambition high for where this can lead us and what, and what, what the outcome could be. So we're now going to quickly show you a little uh, animation uh, that tells you a little bit about where we got to on the first phase and what we're hoping and asking communities to do in phase two. During the difficult times of the COVID-19 pandemic, communities from across the country, local government and the wider public and voluntary sectors worked together, delivering vital help to the most vulnerable in our society when they needed it. Phase two of Democracy Matters will give us the opportunity to embed this way of working aiming to transfer power from across the public sector into the hands of communities. Before the pandemic, we began the first phase of Democracy Matters. 4,000 people from all kinds of backgrounds across Scotland joined the conversation to discuss community democracy. And the message was clear. Communities told us that they wanted more control over the decisions that affect them most. Now we are launching phase two and asking you to think about what this different democratic future might look like. Which powers does your community need? And how will everyone from the community be fairly involved? These are just some of the questions we need you to explore. To help you explore these ideas, you could get together with friends or neighbours to discuss them as a group. Or just take a look at the questions on our website on your own. It's up to you. We are committed to making the Democracy Matters conversation accessible to all. We can offer grants to cover the cost of arranging and holding discussions. Consultation materials are available in easy read format and in Gaelic. Other languages can be made available if you need them. For more information go to consult.gov.scot forward slash democracy hyphen matters. Follow us at Com Empower and sign up to our newsletter. You can also email us at democracymatters at gov.scot. Let's take this next step in Scotland's future together. Um, so the process itself was uh, launched at the end of August in the LIFGO, and as you'll be able to see by the pictures here, it was uh, it was fantastic to see strong political commitment uh, to keeping ambition high with uh, two Scottish government ministers, uh, Tom Arthur uh, on the top row in the middle, uh, who's the Minister for Community Wealth, uh, and Joe Fitzpatrick, the Minister for uh, local, go local Government Empowerment on the bottom right uh, in attendance at the launch, along with the COSLA presidential team. Uh, and there was a real energy in the room and a belief that we have an opportunity, but we need to take that opportunity together to devolve power firmly into communities' hands. Just pop on to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and some may feel that this prospect has been kept out of reach uh, before and perhaps been kept out of reach for too long. But this type of future can be a natural step in Scotland's community empowerment journey. 
and many of you were already delivering services and have played a key role delivering services already that are so vital to where you live and community councils are playing a key role also in dem democratic innovation uh, across the country particularly in the northeast through green participatory budgeting as well as this we have a blooming uh, community development sector and the community empowerment act as well has helped bring more land and buildings under community control. Participation requests have led to more communities being getting a seat at the table and being able to influence decision makers. And this is all having a material difference on the ground and making things better for ordinary people. But we know much more can be achieved if communities were to have more freedom, resource and the right supports in place to get things done in their own way. To make this a reality, we need your help to ensure that we get the views of communities from far and wide across Scotland. The, engage the engagement process itself will now run until the end of next February, and this is, and this is to uh, give you plenty of time to organise your own local discussions with people in your community, using the Dis Democracy Matters discussion document as a basis for thinking how best could this work where you live. To give you a bit more detail about the discussion document, we're asking 16 open questions on the future of community decision making, and these are organised into themes such as power, power, uh, representation and capacity building. Uh, we'll drop a link to the consultation document uh, in the uh, group chat soon, uh, as well as the website. Uh, the discussion document also features three very different fictional communities. These are included to help bring local conversations to life by providing with by providing people with examples of how free imaginary places use a new framework for community decision making to establish arrangements that were right for them. We hope that these act as a stimulus for local discussions and help generate ideas. Uh, our website also offers the discussion document in Gaelic, uh, British Sign Language and also in easy read format. Uh, we can provide translations into different languages uh, if you need them. Uh, you just uh, drop us a line on that one. Uh, we're, as uh, we, I'm here with my colleague Fiona uh, because we're also offering uh, grant funding uh, that you can apply for to cover the cost of your Democracy Matters conversation and we'll be able to answer co more questions about that shortly and we'll also drop a link to the application process. Just to be clear, we don't expect communities to provide detailed solutions to each question. That would be that would be too much. I mean, some of you might have <laughs> clear solutions to each question and that's fantastic. I don't want to prohibit that in any way, but at the same time, I don't want it to feel like a burden. Uh, we just hope that people work together with their communities, families, friends, neighbours to answer as many questions as they can in their way, in, in any way that they feel able. Uh, and by drawing on for your lived experiences of community activity in diverse settings, we'll get so much vital information and I'll inform development of more detailed plans for possible future arrangements that we'll then bring back out to you at a future date. Um, which is me hinting at what's going to happen next. Um, but for now, we're keen to trust the process and trust communities to tell us about what works best for them, what works best for you. Um, however, at the local government and housing committee uh, last month, uh, Minister Tom Arthur uh, reiterated that he's open minded on where this could go. But one of the possibilities that he mentioned uh, he could imagine coming to fruition would be the development of further empowered community councils. Um, but like I say, also open to possibly doing something completely different. So it's an option. Of course, it's an option. And uh, we want to hear we want to hear what you think, obviously. Um, and also to be clear, but we don't see that this process is going to produce one single one size fits all governance model that will work for ev work for everyone everywhere. Um, that's just not not realistic at all, um, given the sort of varied geography and varied population and demographics of Scotland. Um, we see the end point for democracy matters being a framework which communities can work within and have arrangements that can work for them. We don't want this process to impact upon anything that is currently working and working well. Uh, that would be totally counterproductive. Uh, any new arrangements must liberate communities and not encumber them. 
Uh, just to finish off uh, before we open up to questions, I really hope you feel inspired to pick up the Democracy Matters material and discuss it with your communities. We want community councils and community councillors to be at the centre of this conversation and in turn at the heart of strengthening local democracy in Scotland. Thank you for your time this afternoon and we'd be happy to take any questions that you might have. Cheers.